Hi guys, I'm Adam Wilborn from What Culture. And I'm Andy Murray from What Culture. And this is the news. Yes, it most certainly is. And uh, this is a big one, Mr. Wilborn. The uh, wrestling war is heating up. We have uh, an exclusive report from the ever-reliable WrestleVotes who claim that an outstanding offer has been made from AEW to a current big-time major, major, major WWE superstar. Wow. And it is said to be too good to refuse. That is massive. A huge offer, too good to refuse. Come on, Andy, tell me who it is. I don't know. <laughs> or more accurate, they don't know. Understandably, they don't want to give it away. They don't want to, like, basically put their source out in the open and spoil the whole thing before it's potentially done. WWE and other wrestling organizations are notoriously cagey when it comes to, like, pre-announcing negotiations and signings and stuff like that. Now, the thing with this story is that the comment section is going to be full of, ah, it's all made up and all the burn. You do the thing. Rudimental speculation. <laughs> Something like that. But wrestle votes are in quite a difficult mm -hmm. position with this. If they have a scoop to break, they have a scoop to break. They can't go and burn sources and put things like this out in the open and potentially harm the career of whoever it may be, which is almost certainly what they'd be doing. They have a duty of care, they have a responsibility. So while it does seem like speculation, and let's be honest, there's a very high chance it just is, it's kind of, you know, they've got to be guarded. I think sometimes you have to look at the source. I think WrestleVotes are usually a relatively reliable source, whereas anyone could just say, oh, AEW's going to make a massive offer to a big WWE star that's yeah. too good to turn down. There would be some substance to this somewhere. Um, and interesting to consider who it might be, because there's not really any clues. They're just a major WWE yeah. star. Could it be AJ Styles? Could it be... Well, he can't put the belt in the bin over there, No, can exactly. He? Could it be Randy Orton? That's the, that was what you were telling me. Yeah, there's a lot of speculation going around Twitter at the moment this morning that it's Randy Orton. Now, again, that is all speculation, but I mean, Orton's a weird one, isn't he? I, like, he's a guy I would have considered a WWE lifer. Mm -hmm. If he, of all people, goes to AEW, that's not a good look for WWE. No, exactly. It could be work in two ways, if that is the case, of course. That you, exactly, you're stealing like, a talent that is so obviously mm. been in WWE for how long now? What? 15 Decades? years? Over, yeah. Over 15 like, years. forever? Yeah, over, yeah, because he won the title in 2004. I had hair when Randy Orton debuted. <laughs> um, so there's that, but there's also the fact that I mean, Jerry Lauder infamously said if I was going to start a company and build it around someone, Randy Orton's the guy. And it, as much as people go, oh, we've seen everything we can with Randy Orton, not in, not in another company. Yeah. Fresh matchups, maybe he'd be more motivated by that big money, baby. Exactly. Either way, it's an interesting time. Let's see if anything comes of it. Well, speaking of AEW, the second news story today can, uh, is about someone they have officially signed to their roster. And commiserations, everyone else on the AEW roster, because Jimmy Flipping Havoc is coming now. He was announced last night on uh, All Elite Wrestling's Twitter. He was confirmed. Uh, he tweeted, the future is here uh, as a result of that. And... Look, it's very exciting time. He's, I think, the 16th member to join their in-ring roster, joining the likes of, of course, Chris Jericho, Pat, Christopher Daniels. We know all the other big names. Mm -hmm. Company founded by Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks, of course, so they're going to be involved in that. Um, he is a British wrestling legend. We know a lot about, about him here in England. He's won CZW's Tournament of Death. Yeah, people are going to get battered yeah. in AEW now. Yeah, cut open and filled with pins and light tubes and stuff. I, this is really cool. Like, Jimmy Havoc is obviously a UK veteran. He's a very popular guy, massive cult following around the company, uh, around the country. Always been a guy who has kind of tread his own path, you mm -hmm. know, like, he, um, he had a really awesome angle with uh, Will Ospreay in Progress a few years ago, which is how I came to know him. And it's kind of progressed through all the years. Progressed in Progress. You get it? Do you get it? Do you get it? And uh, that's how I got to know him, like around about 2013, 2014 times. Since then, he's just become this almost like a cult of personality mm. in the UK scene. Obviously, he's quite famous for his deathmatch stuff, but he's really charismatic. He can, he can neck a pint really quickly as well. So, <laughs> you know, I think I think it's a it's a cool signing, man. Like he's one of the best, the biggest and best British names still left on the board. Yeah, absolutely. So. He uh, he's done a bit of work in TNA in around 2016, I think it was. We obviously worked with him at Defiant Wrestling. He is a lovely bloke, and this is well deserved. So congratulations to Jimmy Havoc and we wish him all the best in AEW. Before we move on though, we should mention about AEW, they've got that double or nothing announcement party coming on Thursday yeah. night and more and more speculation around that that they could be unveiling K-1000. 
Kenny Omega there. They're going to be revealing some more um, roster additions, no doubt, on Thursday night. But the MGM Grand, where the thing is going to be held, mm -hmm. uh, teased it by tweeting the announcement that you've been waiting for. Kenny Ooh. Omega, his, apparent, his contract with New Japan has apparently expired. He'd be right there. And that would be a big coup, considering all the talk about Kenny Omega going to WWE as well. Speculation. All speculation. Let's, let's, yeah, that I means it's interesting, it's expected. It'll be fun to see what happens. Now, this is a story that's not going to be so much fun. So, comment section, get your cucks, get your SJWs, get whatever other insults. Soy boy, of course, who could forget? Yeah, soy boy, soy cucks, combine the two. Because we're going to talk about Saudi Arabia. Yay! WWE are going back. Shock, WWE are going back as part of their agreement on May the 3rd. We don't know a show title, we don't know a location, we don't have any specifics. A location within Saudi Arabia, obviously. But May the 3rd, it will be the third big show on this contract, and this was all broke by Fightful. The interesting thing I found here is, of course, you're going to have the usual protestations about them going back to Saudi Arabia and the problems that we had sure. all of last year. <laughs> Do you think there's going to be a sort of numbness to this eventually, where it's just like, you just have to accept it. They go there twice a year. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's a 10-year agreement. It's sort of, it's, it's a regular thing now, and I suppose if what happened last year doesn't stop it, there's no stopping it, so just get used to it. Yeah, there, there's absolutely, like, no chance in hell that WWE are ever going to pull out of this agreement. So, like, they, they don't care about the bad PR. They are making loads and loads of absurd volumes of money from it. And the wrestlers will go over there, the ones that want to go over there, and they'll have a nice house show style evening with low wear and tear. The fans will enjoy it because they don't get to see these wrestlers in the flesh too often. And it is what it is. Now look, I'm not saying people should abandon their protestations. People are absolutely right. And I, myself, I'll continue to do so because I think the agreement is pretty disgusting to be perfectly honest with you. As outlined by Adam Cleary in a wonderful video earlier this year. Check that out if you haven't already. But, I mean, it's not going to stop. You, if you're constantly regurgitating the same talking points, you are wasting your breath to a certain degree because why would they pull out? Like, they want money. They don't They don't care about anything else. And look at it this way. You get two banter shows a year, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that'll tell you who does care about the rules, though. Well, when it matters. WWE, uh, and that is because they have announced new tag team rules that have been unveiled uh, earlier this week. You might have missed this, actually, on Monday Night Raw. It all centres uh, around that match between Braun Strowman and Kurt Angle taking on Baron Corbin and Drew McIntyre. Now, in that match, uh, Braun Strowman was disqualified for attacking Baron Corbin when he wasn't a legal man. And Corey Graves on commentary, it's been confirmed, has clarified the new rules when it comes to tag team wrestling. And that is that uh, when you're in a tag team match, your partner can come in and make one save during the match. After that, they risk getting disqualified, the match being thrown out, etc., etc., losing the match effectively if you're not the legal man and you come into the ring, which is, yeah, we something we see on a regular basis to break mm. up pinfalls, but that could be uh, not happening anymore. Kind, kind of stupid, isn't it? Then what's the whole point of teamwork? What's the whole point of looking out for each other and, you know, like cutting the ring off and stuff? It just seems like a really weird move and another sign of WWE's complete disdain for tag wrestling. Well, I suppose they've been saying a lot um, since the story we reported on a while back, of course, of the re Revival being disappointed and not only with their own push, but the entire division. It looks like to be a bigger thing as a part of a change up of the tag team division. So you've got this rule change, you've got uh, new teams like Heavy Machinery being brought up to the main roster and of course teams who uh, have been, let's just say, underutilized, finally getting a... Push. Exactly. So I'm intrigued to see how it goes from here. I'll give it a chance, but I sense that this is one of those things that may be forgotten yeah. in about a week's I time. I mean, like breaking up pins and stuff is <laughs> its an imperative part of tag team psychology. It's just, I don't know, WWE are weird, man. Right, let's move on to today's Twitter questions. Don't forget you can always tweet the matters at WhatCultureWWE. And we start with our good friend, Mark Gallagher, who sent us a video question for today. Let's see what Mark has to say. I watched NXT TakeOver last week Full of flashy spots and athletic feats But the magic didn't make me care These stories didn't give a damn Am I even a real wrestling fan? <laughs> a question we've all asked ourselves at one time or another. Am I even a real wrestling fan? 
Uh, talking there about NXT TakeOver, I suppose a little bit can apply to Halftime Heat. It was a bit of a spot fest. I loved it. I loved it too, yeah. Um, but is, yeah, is there a danger of NXT, despite the fact of how thrilling it is, perhaps losing elements of story in there? Yeah, I completely agree with him, uh, to an extent. I think the Let's take Ricochet versus Gargano. Spectacular. Like, one of the craziest popcorn matches you will ever see. But nothing in that match meant anything. It was a fun spectacle. And you know what? That's all wrestling has to be sometimes. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't necessarily subscribe to the cornets of the world who think that, you know, like a rest hold for 10 minutes has got this deep, meaningful, psychological impact on the match. Sometimes it's fun to just go out there and have a sugar rush. Sometimes I eat a whole packet of Maltesers. Like, you do that. Sometimes we have a biscuit meeting in the Watcom <laughs> Exactly. It's, 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 there has to be a variety, I think. And to counter that, I would say that something like Bianca Belair versus Shayna Baszler, while not necessarily the most technically fluid match in the world, by the end, it told the story of Bianca Belair kind of having to abandon this bravado, this... Uh, this undefeated persona that she's taken over and being humanized in the way she struggled through those various mm -hmm. chokeholds and the way she almost got out of that last one at the end, it was absolutely devastating when she finally collapsed and had to go out. There is still good storytelling in NXT, I agree, but they are in danger. Like, look at that War Games match. That was a psychology-free mess of a thing. I suppose when you talk about Jim Cornette, then, I always remember when he talks about being involved with WWE and talks about chocolate and vanilla. You like chocolate uh, ice cream, I like vanilla wrestling. So as long as you get a bit of both, it should be fine. I think NXT uh, has, yeah, a little bit of everything. I think, arguably, because we got so used to the main roster where they just go, this is what the story yeah. is. The okay. element of nuance in NXT sometimes gets lost, but I think there is always uh, a fascinating story in every match, and as we hopefully build towards a satisfactory conclusion to uh, Gargano, Tommy Chompa, you will hopefully see that story be played out. That will be the key one for me because, boy, did that story go off the rails. It'll be interesting to see if they can get back to it. Uh, next question comes from Rick Master Flex on Twitter. Wow. Nice name. <laughs> uh, who says, who do you want to host WrestleMania this year? Gangrel, obviously. Gangrel is a very good choice. Who else? I don't know. They, they, obviously, they've had... Uh, legends, they've had the New Day host it before. I suppose you want someone who who isn't going to be involved in it. Do you know who I'd like, and this is never going to happen, but I've been watching lots of like backstage interviews or um, there was a really good one on Reddit Squared Circle recently. It was it was them, well, it was one of them with Chris Jericho on the, the pre-show, I think, I think to Survivor Series, and it's just banter. If they just let him go with it, Imagine Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn hosting WrestleMania. <laughs> they're on the shelf, they're That'd not going to be used, and it would be hilarious. It would. If not them, I don't know, some sort of celebrity endorsement is going to be happening because it's New York, isn't yeah. it? Let's be perfectly uh, yeah. honest. Brooklyn but let's Broad. know who you think uh, should host Drink WrestleMania. Hogan? Anyway, okay. um, Daniel Coombe gives us our final question for today, mm. and this is a good one. When will Bray Wyatt be back on TV, says Dan. Oh, man. <laughs> Bray Wyatt. <laughs> a lot of people asking this. He's back, he's cleared, he's just tweeting weird stuff. <laughs> he's a weirdo, man, Bray Wyatt. Like, well, it's it's hard to make sense of what is actually going on with that guy because he took so much time off house shows for apparently no reason whatsoever. He hasn't been on TV in about six months or something like that. I don't know, like, where do you, how does he get back in? I thought the Royal Rumble would have been a nice, easy way. Oh my God, it's Bray Wyatt. What are you going to say, you big freak? I can tell you exactly when Bray Wyatt will return to TV, and that is at the Elimination Chamber. I'm not a fan of this, but I can definitely see it happening. Daniel Bryan survives the Elimination Chamber. He holds up that belt. You're smoking it, Bill. He's perfect. He holds up that hemp belt of his, and then we get a... And there's Bray Wyatt. <laughs> Bray Wyatt is back, Eric Rowan, the story is there. Oh, man. Um, is he going to bring I'm that? not happy about it, but that's my prediction. Is he going to bring that creepy little kid with him? Oh, the, that this, time he scared John Cena. This singing kid. And he got to be great. honest, if he, as long as he brings back Luke Harper, I don't really care. I love Luke Harper. Yeah, I like Luke Harper as well. I think he's fantastic. And to be fair, Bray... Rowan last night on SmackDown did a job. He's fine, yeah. He Bray is. Wyatt smells for it, doesn't he? Who's, yeah, well, who's this, smell, like? Who do you think is the smelliest wrestler in WWE? Let us know in the comments section below. Let's move on to today's and finally... Killian Dean! And I know... Oh, he's going to be coming after you for that. <laughs> Phil knows him. Um, right, let's move on to today's and finally... And I know yesterday I promised it was going to be a one-off for um, WWE action figures. But our very own Phil Chambers sent me this in the small hours of the morning. And I have to show it you because 
it is, it might be the best one we've had because all the others are like crap knockoff ones or accidentally putting Tamina in the packaging for Triple H. But this is truly a work of art. This is Seth Rollins's action figure. <laughs> And what? we'll start, try and zoom in on that. I'm fairly certain what they've tried to do is put a little blonde streak in the top of his head. It just looks like his hair is really badly receding. And what was he using? Wow. It looked like he had drawn... drawn the face on with a sharpie. Yeah, it looks like they'd drawn his face on with a sharpie. That's what I would look like if I tried to grow hair. Yeah. Oh so my God. Please use this image for him Ooh. in the build to WrestleMania. If you've got any more WWE action figures that look as, well, crap as that, um, feel free to send them to me because I absolutely love getting it. You can follow me on Twitter at Adam Wilborn. You can follow him on Twitter at Andy H. Murray. And you can follow <laughs> Phil on Twitter at Phil My Chambers. Let us know your thoughts on that and all of today's news stories in the comments section below. And don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And make sure you subscribe to What Culture Wrestling on iTunes or Spotify for daily wrestling podcasts. Our Raw and Smackdown review will be out later on today. My thanks to Andy Murray. Thank you for watching and we will see you soon.